Everybody, it's Nikki again, and I'm here to do video three, I think, of my bad sensor video series um, for Medtronic's viewing pleasure. Um, again, there is no medical advice in here. I'm just talking sensors. I'm talking about my own personal numbers, but I think when you put it together with the reports coming out of my Facebook group and then comments I'm getting, and then people talking about what they're hearing at their endocrinologist office offices, um, I think that what the picture, the overall picture, is that people are having a whole lot of problems with their sensors right now. Um, and I have in my numbers, in my logs, uh, a pretty good idea as to why. Um, so I'm putting it together. That's it. Okay, so in the last video, I explained what a calibration factor range looked like during a healthy sensor. And a healthy sensor, for me, was just one... It's not always about accuracy because even that can be confusing because even very accurate sensors can still be very laggy for me. Um, so this wasn't an issue in accuracy. This is an issue of my having nice, comfortable calibration factors that don't give me a hard time when it's time to calibrate. Um, or if I were in auto, which I'm not ever again, um, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't give me problems with staying in auto. Um, with a healthy sensor, that was not a problem at all. And in fact, what I said about my healthy sensor back in February was that I had 0% of my calibration factors were at an 8 or above. And an 8 or above in a, with a Medtronic sensor is a problematic area. Um, in auto mode, it probably won't work at all. And even as you get further above 8, um, even, in, even in manual mode, you can start to have some problems. Um, so... In February, there was there was nothing like that. Um, had I had a high blood sugar, and I really didn't have many, but had I had a very high blood sugar or a fast rising high blood sugar, you know, I would see some then, but they were reflective of what's going on with my blood sugar. I should not have, um, you know, numbers in the eights and nines when my blood sugar is low. In fact, what I showed you about a healthy sensor and I apologize for the you know for the graphs but they look like each other right like if this is the concentration of my my blood sugars and here's the concentration of my calibration factors um, so I'm going to show you a faulty I'm gonna call it a faulty or temperamental um, sensor that I had September 8th through September 16th it was an eight-day sensor so it wasn't a bad sensor because I was able to get it to work. Um, but you can see the difference. Here's the concentration of my blood sugars. Again, the vast majority falling beneath 150. And here are my calibration factors, the vast majority falling above a seven. Um, that's, a, that's a mismatch. And the problem is that they're already half of them were unusable. But then if I had a rising blood sugar, it was going to make even more of them unusable. So... Um, this is all part of my evidence to Medtronic to please get your sensor straight because I miss using my calibration factor. Okay, um, example of a calibration factor range in a faulty sensor. Um, so the, I did a long detailed account about what I had to do with the sensor and kind of some trickery I had to use because I had to. I did get my sensor to work eight days, but I would not have been able to get it to work eight days had I just inputted numbers that I was seeing from my meter because so many of them were already outside of range. So I did need to use some trickery and with that trickery, I got eight days out of the sensor. Um, I left this very long and boring account on my Facebook group, uh, with my Facebook group. Um, out of the eight days, three days are missing. I don't think that affects what I'm able to do because I can still show you, because it's still dependent on my blood sugars and I still have those inf that information for, for, five of the three, for five of the eight days. Okay, so of the five days, um, I, over that five days, I got 36 readings 80% of my BGs were 150 or under. 11% were uh, 151 to 200, and 8%, which were three scores, were between 201 and 250. I mentioned in the post about February's good or healthy sensor that the distribution of calibration factors were proportionate to the distribution of blood sugar scores in a healthy sensor. However, with this sensor, they are conversely related with only 22% of the factors falling under six. 25% falling between a range of six and seven, and 52% falling in a calibration factor range of eight or higher. That's where I showed you. So here's the bulk of my blood sugars, and there's the bulk of my calibration factors. 52% um, 
we're at an eight or higher, but even that 25% in the, in the range of six to seven, if those were with really low blood sugars, then those are potentially a problem too, because as soon as I see that rise, or I, or I just, as soon as I see that rise, it's gonna push up that factor as well. Um, so really, we're looking at 77% being problematic. Um, if we are thinking auto mode, then over the course of five of the eight days, more than 44% of my calibrations yielded a factor that was too high to be used in auto mode with an additional 8% being very unlikely to be successful. Um, I call that very unlikely. That's, those are the ones that were in eight, but those are really probably not gonna work in auto mode. 52% um, would most likely have resulted in my getting kicked out of auto or failing to gain entry. But even in manual mode, these factors were troubled with a total of 36% being at a calibration factor of a 10 or higher which means that even in manual mode, 36% of these factors were gonna get me kicked out. Um, we're gonna get me to, you know, we're, I was gonna to be told to change my sensor. As I said earlier, I was able to use the sensor for a total of eight days, but it was a minefield. Um, okay, so I gave you, I talked to the range, I talked about the distribution. It's, it, that really is what it's all about. When, when um, I can have, a sensor where a lot of my calibration factors are too high as long as during that week my blood sugar ran high then there is no problem with that sensor that's just what it is however on during a week where my blood sugars are not going above 150 for the most part I should not have a whole bunch of factors that are really too high and that's that sign that something's wrong with the sensors um, and then I'll kind of go back again and I'll say back in February that wasn't happening I had zero um, I mean, most of the time, zero factors that were an eight or above um, with maybe an occasional one. But again, that could have even been reflective of what was happening. Either I was rebounding or my blood sugar really was high. Then around May, I have it in my notes, but let's say around May, I started to see an overall inflation. Um, and then last week, and I'm going to do this in a separate video, but last week, over three days, my first three days, it was more than 50% of my BGs were above an eight. My, my calibration factors were above an eight. First three days of a sensor and my blood sugars were great. So there was no reason for it, it's just a bad sensor. This was all my attempt um, to get Medtronic to listen. This is the non-scientist in me. All I'm gonna say is that if that calibration factor is often inflated toward the end of a sensor's life, let's say in the last couple of days, and that I saw time and time again, um, but in the beginning of the sensor, it always dropped back down again. It was always really low and stable and everything in the beginning, and then it rose toward the end. And now, and that was a sign of degradation of the sensor, um, which could be in the coding. And now my calibration factors are starting way above what they used to be toward the end of the life. Um, again, reflecting a degradation and something, is it possible there is a problem with the coding? That is the non-scientist in me. Um, and does it, would it matter anyway? Because I can't fix it. So, all right, that's it. I'll be back to do another one about my November. And then other stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.